Hi guys, today we're gonna do a classic pawn game. So go to Eclipse and do the procedure that we always do, sort of um, tutorials, project, source folder, create package, tutorial, and um, that's tutorial seven. Yeah. Uh, go to your template, copy main and put to into your newly create package. So you should have something like this. We we'll create this template um, in tutorial four, so you have or tutorial five. So if you haven't done them, uh, go back there or just um, type that um, manually. So at this point, you might want to pause and uh, pause the video and then just copy all of these imports. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do uh, create enum for um, the user action. So we're going to be controlling a bat, and there is going to be a ball. So the ball will be moving um, automatically, and the bat will be controlled by the user. So um, the user action as an enum could be uh, in one of the three states none, left, or right. These are just constants for um, application width and application height. 800 by 600. Um, also, these are the constants, gameplay constants. So, radius of the wall, uh, bad width, and bad height. These are our actual um, sort of game objects. Circle is going to be a ball with radius of ball radius, and rectangle bad. Um, with the values bat width and bat height. These two billions will um, change the direction of the ball. So ball up means that uh, currently the ball is going up, and left means the ball is going um, currently is going left. So um, in uh, left in x direction and up um, in y direction. So we send the default action. Default user action is none, so user is not pressing any keys. Our timeline is the thing that animates um, the game. Currently, it will be animating the ball. And finally, a boolean variable to hold um, to say whether it's running or not, so whether the game is running or not. So first thing we want to do, and first thing we always do, is set the um, preferable size, preferred size to a root, um, which is app width and app height. So in create content, we basically um, create um, all our things, um, all our game objects, and initialize them to a default state. So we set translate x of bat, so which is basically the x coordinate of our bat, to the middle of the screen somewhat, because this will actually set a little, a little bit to the right, um, because x is the top left x coordinate, um, sort of, uh, the most left um, x value of the um, bat. Uh, same thing with y, um, we set the y coordinate to app height, so height of the program or the application minus the bat height so it will be right um, to the bottom bat set fill just sets the color of the bat <clears throat> this is our keyframe the thing that will animate or the thing that will run um, every this amount of time which is uh, 16 milliseconds. It is roughly equal, um, roughly equals to 60 frames per second. And whatever will be within the sort of this block of code is going to be run every um, 16 um, milliseconds. The first thing, first thing we do, if not running, then simply return because the game is not running. Running, so we don't do anything. And this is our 
user input handling. So we switch the current action, um, this one, uh, and we see, we check whether it's left. So if the user is pressing the um, left arrow or the A key on, um, on the keyboard, then we move the bat to the left. But first we check against, uh, we check the X value against uh, screen uh, coordinates so that it doesn't go off the screen. So if the bat's um, X value minus five is greater than or equal to zero, so it's basically to the right, to the right of um, screen, then uh, of the zero value rather, then we can move the bat to the left. And same thing with the um, right enum. We check the right um, sort of part of the bat against the right side of the screen. And if it is less than app width, then we move it slightly to the right. So by five units, really. And in case none, that just did nothing. This is where we move the ball. So every time we check whether the ball is going left, so the, whether a ball left a billion is true or not. If it is true, then um, add minus five to the X coordinate of the ball, else add five um, to the X coordinate, so it'll move to the right. And same thing with ball up. This is our collision detection, very similar to what we did with uh, the bat. We, uh, this could be a little bit confusing because trans get translate X uh, when invoked on the ball, which is of type circle, it returns not the top left coordinate, but the uh, center coordinate. So we get the uh, center X value. We then take away radius of the ball and then we check whether it equals to zero. So basically whether it's here um, on the screen. And if it is, um, then we set all left to false. So they'll move right. And same thing with um, the right side of the screen. Now we check against the top um, of the screen which is um, get translate y minus ball radius, so it's the same except we're using y. And if it equals to zero, then set ball up to false. And this long check is to see if we're colliding with the bat. This is actually a little bit of cheating here because we're not actually we're not checking against the bat, but the line at which the bat should be. So if it's so if the value of sort of speed, the, the number of units we move x and y coordinates um, of the ball is not sort of divisible, like um, I've cho I choose five because everything that ends with zero or ends with five is divisible by five. So it's easier to check whether this ex will exactly equal to that value. Otherwise you have to do full collision detection um, like bounding boxes. So um, to check whether the rectangle uh, collides with another rectangle. It's actually just um, two more if statements. So if you want to do it, you can modify the program so that the speed could be anything, uh, not just five. And finally, if we missed the ball and the ball hit um, the bottom of the screen, then restart the game. And as always, we add keyframes, but we only have currently just one frame. Add that to the timeline's keyframes, set cycle count to indefinite so that the timeline will always run the same frame. And we add our game objects to the root so that we could display it on screen. Uh, we only have two objects, so just well and bad. Our um, restart game method is pretty simple. Just stop the game and then start the game again. Stop game is again simple. Um, we set running to false, so the game is no longer running, which means that this will not execute. 
or rather the whole part. And then we stop the timeline, and so we stop our animation. And for start game, we set ball up to true, so that when we miss the ball, it doesn't go down anymore. It'll um, change the direction to go up. We set translate x um, to the original, sort of to center, and y to. And then we um, run the animation again, and we set running to true so that this block here could be executed. We wouldn't need to use running um, really in if this stop animation um, timeline dot stop would um, cause the animation to stop immediately. If you um, read the Java doc, it says that it is an asynchronous call, which means that it will not stop um, immediately. May or may not. Finally, um, input handling or input. Um, getting user input. So scene set and key pressed. Um, event get code as always. So if it is A um, on the keyboard, then move li uh, move to the left, or rather set action to user action left. And same thing with the um, key D. And on set released, or when we sort of stop pressing the key when we release the key. Then action we set action to user action none. Uh, this won't execute anything. We need to do instead of um, moving the bat right here and then sort of removing the whole enum thing. If we do that, then we'll see a little bit of sort of um, delay because for the first time it will run fine, but then when the uh, key is still pressed, there will be repeated sort of um, calls, callbacks from the JavaFX input handling thread, so um, which is pretty much the same thread. And it will not run immediately. And finally, just start the game. Um, Okay, now we see the ball, and we need to sort of hit the ball with our bat. And if we lose the ball, then we'll restart the game from the middle, and then change the direction of the ball to go up, so we don't lose it again. You can modify it by adding score, which is just JavaFX um, text. Import JavaFX um, that scene text I think and then simply put um, set translate x y to put it somewhere here or to the left so it could be visible so it's visible and um, just add this to the root node so the text um, is visible and that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching